there's a little baby bit of coolant still left in there the, the hose is wet that would be going in our engine so we're gonna flush this out the best that I can until it looks fairly clear coming out the other side We're shredding the belt, but hey, it works. Well, this is a good way to start this out. We've got a combination of snow, sleet, and just not that great of winds. So, uh, I guess it's the perfect time to work on the Maverick. I guess our goal today, maybe, is to at least get the three of the four wheels that were stuck, unstuck. And that includes that one right there, which is going to be safe for last just because of the, the spindle nut and all that good stuff. And so I'm going to start on the back, so it should be a little bit easier. In the last video you saw, we did our terrible radiator situation. I'm going to discuss that here in just a little while. While we're out here, I would like to jack up the rear. These are 14s, by the way, so if I can get a set of 14s that'll roll better, I'll put those on it. But we just got to get the wheels off and somehow get the drums to come loose so that way we can back off the the back side of the adjuster so that way the shoes aren't turning anymore or at least touching the uh, the drum itself so that's going to be fun <sighs> it's cold it's tennessee it's i know it's not northern or cold but i'm cold let's jack the rear of this car up so we did spray these wheels down with some pb blaster to try and break some of these loose that was before the snow so, oh hey, it broke loose. This isn't the worst of the wheels. I wanted to start on this one just to kind of figure out how my sanity will be tested. But at least we've got one un done. Ah, there we go. That's two. We can get four broken loose. I'll consider it a win. That's three. Fingers crossed. Oh man, that was already loose. <laughs> How about that? Okay. Well, uh, I'll loosen these up a little bit, at least where I can get them by hand. And then we'll jack the car up and hopefully take this wheel off. The problem here is that the ground is really soft. So I'm kind of worried that our jack is just going to sink into the ground. As soon as we put it up under here, we're gonna try it anyway. I've done worse with it. Just gonna try and get up under a frame rail and hope for the best. Hello? car has sat here for a few months, nothing too crazy, but it's managed to bury itself in the process. At least the suspension has some flex to it. Okay, Jack is still alright. Okay, let's take that off. I get an opportunity to look up in the rear axle, see how things look. One of these held air, I don't remember which one. To go back to part one and see which one did and which one didn't. Come on now. Thank you. Wow, those are tiny. Makes me feel safe. Okay. Any chance you're gonna give up? No. First off, I need to secure this vehicular with some jack stands. See if I can break anything loose. It's 
moving. All right, we got holes up right here. Just working our way back and forth, prying on it. Not too bad. Well, it snowed until the night, and I ran out of daylight on that last clip, so I decided to quit. But I'm back now. A couple days later, it's done nothing but rain, so everything around here is muddy, and it's just cold enough to be annoying. So this is coming off. I don't care how it's going to happen. This is coming off. The adjuster on the back of the drum, before you say anything, it is seized solid. It will not move at all. I've tried it, and I don't really feel comfortable getting under this thing because it's muddy. And a block of wood is holding it up. So we're going to keep prying on this thing, and the drum is shot anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, if we did fix the brakes, we'd have to replace all the brakes. So I am not even going to chance it. I'm not going to try it. This is coming out. Just wait. I've never had a drum fight me so hard. That's for sure. But I've also usually done it in the shop where it was at least a little bit warmer. So I'm a little bit mad. I really don't know. Well, of course, the camera didn't feel like it needed to record the last little bit of that fight. You can see that I accidentally knocked out two studs because I laid into this thing with a giant sledgehammer because I got tired of it. The adjuster is still stuck. I can't even move it now that I have access to it. It's still just glued in there. The shoe stayed, but the drum finally slipped off. Um, <laughs> it was a fight, but I destroyed the drum doing that, but it is off of there. The sledgehammer did the trick, finally, so I hate that I missed it. We'll try again on the other two that we have to deal with, so that's going to be great. Now let's uh, put this wheel back on, and we can finally move to the other side. Ah, yes, sir. Thank you. So let's just stay a little bit hopeful. I'm hoping that uh, we won't have as much trouble as we did the other side. Luckily, this side over here is not as muddy. These leaves are catching all that mud here, and I can have a nice little place to lay down if I need to. I'm not gonna do that, though. So we've got one for four. Just break all these loose. Oh, yes. Thank you, PB Blaster. Ah, oh, yeah. There we go. Last one. Oh man. So I lifted this wheel actually off of the ground and decided to rock it back and forth and it had some movement to it. So I took it out of uh, gear, out of park at least. I think that's going to move. And we've got the other wheel on the ground over there. That's going to roll right there. We've got that much movement, it'll at least break free when we get to rolling if it's stuck. So I'm going to put that wheel back on and I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, I guess the only reason it wasn't moving was because the other side was locked. So if this one rolls that well, I think we're going to call this a win. I'm going to put the lug nuts back on and drop it back down on the ground and then start on the dreaded front one, one that I have not wanted to do since we started. Now, obviously we'll have to put air in these tires, but three out of four did hold. And I've got some 14s somewhere that if they don't hold, I can at least put a set on. I just want to get it up to the shop so I can work on it easily. If we can air these tires up long enough to get to the shop, we will be good. Now to the front. So this is the only one left. And probably should have done this one first because of how nasty it looks. The other front tire was kind enough to roll for us, so this is our last one here. But you can see that it's really the worst one of all the wheels. It's got a lot of rust on these studs. So I'm a little bit nervous about how this is going to go. We'll try it.
there's a broken stud in our future. Here we go. Oh. Yes. Thank you. There's one. I'm ready to spin. I really don't know if the whole stud is spinning or the. I think it's working. Okay. comes the bottom. They're the worst ones. It's three. There's four. Wow. I'm out of, I'm out of breath. I'll leave the jack back for safety. So we'll take off the dust cap here, and you can see why the fronts are a little bit more complicated. We've got bearings inside this one. Uh, this the drum actually holds the wheel on, while the axle on the rear holds the wheels on. So the studs are pressed into the drum itself. So it's going to get a little bit more tedious to pull this one apart, but I think we can do it. So first, we have to get the cotter pin out. Bend that one back this way. And then the other side back through. Sometimes the tails break and that's why you never want to put a used one of these back in. But luckily we're just trying to get up to the house so I'm not worried about it right now. So we'll stick that through there. Pull you through wherever it went, right there. I'm gonna put all this stuff in a box so I don't lose any of it. And we'll take this retaining clip off, and then here is the spindle nut. That shouldn't be too hard to take off here. Yeah, just got a little bit of resistance on it, so it should pop right out. Hoping that our bearings aren't seized up or anything. I don't believe it would be because that dust cat was still on there. And all this still looks pretty good and uh, greased up. So we can maybe wiggle the front bearing out, the outer bearing at least. Yeah, get that one out of our way. So there's a washer here. And this is what the jam nut basically pushes up against so it doesn't actually ride against the bearing. So we're going to keep that. Now, ooh, that bearing is, wow. This bearing is absolutely thrashed. I can barely roll. There we go. It's got a lot of play in it. So, good thing this is getting pulled apart anyway. Now, the problem is, it's working the shoes loose. And I don't believe our inner bearing is frozen. Just think again it's another case of everything being stuck against the uh, the shoes on the drum. So we'll start to get in the work uh, again. I tried on the adjuster and it is rock solid, frozen shut. So I'm not even going to attempt it again. And like I said earlier, if we were going to rebuild all this stuff, we would put new uh, shoes, new drums and everything on it. Uh, we could resurface them, but at this point I would just go ahead because these things are pitted. The inside of that other drum was nasty, so I would just replace them all together. Sometimes you get lucky, but on stuff like this, I wouldn't even chance it. This is not the ideal way to do it, but it is a way to do it. Yeah, these 
shoes are shot. Which leads me to believe that the drum will be too. So it doesn't hurt my feeling to, to do this to it. Aha! We are good. Oh wow. You can't even see the <laughs> Okay. Well you can't even like literally not even see the uh the adjuster. It's so rusted. I can't even I it won't even move. Get that out of there. Yeah. That sucker not moving at all. What I may do is just take off the entirety of the shoes on this one. Just cause it's not that happy. Our inner bearing stayed in there. I think we can just kind of wiggle. Oh wow, the uh, the cable on the adjuster anyway was broken, so these front drums were not going to work at all. But we can take the shoes out, put the bearings back in, and then put the spindle nut back on, and then it should rotate. So let's just uh, knock the rest of this stuff out of here. You can buy all this new. So don't don't sweat that. I'll keep all the adjusters and whatnot. Might be able to reuse them, fix them, clean them up. But see what the inside of the drum looked like. Yeah, a lot of pitting. So these probably wouldn't want to reuse these. I mean, you could probably resurface. Looks like they have a good bit of material left, but they're just not that great for reuse. I don't know if you can see that well, but they look pretty nasty. So I do feel better at least about getting these back in there. So throw this back in. Let's grab our outer bearing here. Slide that back into place, even though it's destroyed. I don't have any. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> okay. We don't need a whole lot of preload, just enough to where feel a little bit of resistance. So the spindle nut is having a little bit of trouble going all the way on. So I'm going to actually spray the spindle down with some of this PB Blaster brake cleaner. So hopefully this stuff is uh, pretty good. Uh, brake cleaner is very helpful with stuff like this because on a uh, spindle nut you will have the issue if this thing does not tighten up or uh, if this nut backs off then you basically lose the entire hub assembly and then your wheel falls off and that's no fun. We've come to the next day and it rained all night so everything is still just as muddy but we at least have or are supposed to have four wheels that spin. We'll get this wheel put back on a couple of things we have to do are the transmission cooler line and air up the rear tires. And then we should be able to move. Hey, let's put these on. Okay, wheels back on. All of them are on the ground. And I just took a hose, looped the two coolant lines to the transmission, put a hose clamp on each end. It's not ideal, but it will definitely get us to the house. So now the biggest thing to do is fire it up and See if it'll move. We'll air up the tires right as soon as we're about to go because I don't know how long they're going to hold. So hopefully they'll hold long enough to get to the house, but we'll do our best and see what happens. Oh boy. Wish me luck, guys. Close the 
vacuum leak, I never fixed it. Our belt is more of a shoestring now. I think we've dropped a couple cylinders. It's cold out here. The car doesn't want to run. Let's try it again. Well, of course the one wheel I didn't have to take off is the only one that has a tire that will not hold air. So I actually had to wait again because one, I ran out of daylight, and two, I had to go buy a tire. I bought a $50 tire from Walmart. I'm about to go take this one up to the shop and we're gonna put the new tire on because all three of the other tires would hold air long enough at least for us to drive. So that's the goal. If we can get this thing to where the new tire is on and uh, if we get this thing rolling, then heck, we should be able to drive it this time. If not, it's going to sit right here until somebody comes and takes it from me. Because I am done with this car right now. Okay, we made it back with the old Walmart special. Dextero, the 195.75.14, and it cost me about $50, and that would be plenty to make this car roll. Really, we need to replace all four tires, but nah, don't care that much. We just want to see if she'll roll. Now one thing you did see in the last clip, this thing was not wanting to run. And I haven't been able to make it run since that clip. So that was a whole day ago, or two days at this point now. So I'm trying to figure out what the heck went wrong. I don't know. So we're going to find that out here in just a second as soon as this wheel is done. But for whatever reason, I mean I was trying to rev it up just a little bit to uh, disengage the choke and maybe let it idle a little bit smoother. But it didn't like that. And then I cranked it and cranked it and cranked it until the battery went completely dead. So we weren't able to actually start it anymore. And then I ran out of daylight again. So, so whatever. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I'm not the biggest fan of winter time. Which is not even winter yet. I just don't like the days being short in general. And of course it runs, so we're going to let it warm up and uh, then we'll engage the fan on the front, put the air back in this tire here, and then maybe a little bit up at the front for some left, but uh, of course, of course, <laughs> I, I guess I just flooded it and made it mad. Ago. It's not one thing, it's another. A little more air in the compressor this time. Let's try her again. I got faith.
that's better. I guess the compressor was just so low that it didn't have enough pressure to fully air up the tire. I mean, I had 60 pounds in here, but it just wasn't enough. Did I put this on the wrong wheel? Surely not. This tire literally held air two days ago. All right, two tires on the back. After weeks, it feels like, trying to get this thing to run and move. Now all we got to do is make sure this thing can run long enough to move. That's the big kicker right now because we've been having troubles with this thing starting. So let's pop the hood, fire it up, and hope for the best. I don't know if it'll move, but we'll try it. Studios. Dylan's got the Maverick running. Wonder what's next.
brake pedal, we have no gas pedal, we just have drive and neutral. But the steering works, it's moving. We've got a brake line on because we don't have any brakes, but hey, that's okay. I just cranked the idle up way high. Just take up for a lap, a little victory lap around the yard. Ooh, we are flying. Oh my. That's working. This is what all the commotion's been about this evening. I guess you could say it made it. 